guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I've always been on the quest to find out the secret sauce to living an extraordinary life. I initially thought it was just finances, but then I met a lot of people who were really rich and really miserable. So that led me to discover there's more components. There's time, there's location, there's health, freedom, which um, Aaron, our guest today, will talk about. And there's also mental, like energy, clarity, focus. So I'm happy to introduce uh, Aaron Wolf, and he is a former uh, Olympic Taekwondo competitor, really fascinating sport. I competed as well. And he's going to talk about all the lessons from uh, personal development, fitness, business, mindset, healthy. So um, Aaron, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited to talk to you. I'm really, like I said, uh, I've always, I'm always curious about people that are doing things differently. And so you're an individual, you're, you explore how to apply lessons you learn in sports to the rest of your life. So tell people your origin story and we'll go off of that. Sure. Uh, my origin story kind of has two parallel stories. So I'll, I'll start with uh, kind of my my professional career type origin story, then I'll come back and and um, circle around to my uh, more the sports and health and fitness. Um, and where I where I started and throughout my career um, really makes no sense where I'm at now because I've done so many different things and I've kind of jumped around to to some things. So um, I uh, wasn't a great student in high school. Um, so I but I wanted to get into the medical field. That was one of my initial goals. Is I, I wanted to go into medicine. Uh, because I was always interested in the the sciences, specifically the bio biosciences. So um, after I graduated, I I started going to college. Realized that the same thing that was true in high school was also true in college. I'm just not cut out for the classroom setting. Uh, I, I didn't do well, except for in the, the classes that I probably should have failed in, which was you know, organic chemistry, anatomy, physiology. Organic chemistry was the, the favorite class I ever took, and and I still kind of nerd out. I still have my my organic chemistry book, and I open it every once in a while just to, my my wife rolls her eyes because she you know, thinks I'm such a nerd when I do that but <laughs> um so I, I I wasted a couple of years going to college and and uh really nothing to show for it so I ended up going into the Air Force um spent uh I enlisted for four years did almost five because I was in during 9-11 and they did what they call a stop loss which was you know when 9-11 happened um I was supposed to get out not long after that and they said Nope, you're not getting out. You're, you're, you're going to stay in for, and I ended up staying in for almost another year after my original separation date. Worked at the uh, National Security Agency right outside of Washington D.C. Um, fortunately, there's not much else I can tell you about that because everything's top secret there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll move we'll move past that one pretty quickly. When I was in the Air Force, I I got exposed more to to more entrepreneurial type mindsets and different things that that. Um, different types of people were talking about. So I was still interested in, in sciences and um, you know, health and fitness, that type of thing. But I, I, I also got more interested into the, the entrepreneurial side of business. So I knew I needed some exposure into sales. So when I got out of the Air Force, I got a, a job at a company. It's a, a finance company. Um, and it, we sold loans all day. And I knew it, it, you know, lending is not something I ever aspired to be in, but I knew I wanted the, the sales experience. Uh, so I did that for a few years, um, moved on, and I ended up getting a job at a company called Diebold. Uh, started as a supervisor in their call center and worked my way up in the company into some management positions. Held some positions that were supposed to be reserved for people with a college degree, uh, but I was able to prove myself to some of the upper management, and they liked me, so I, I got into um, some management positions. Uh, about that time, I started. Uh, I bought my first rental property, too. Um, with that entrepreneurial mindset, I knew I needed to start building something for myself because I didn't want to work for somebody else the rest of my life. So I, I bought my first rental property. And um, at some point one day, I I just, you know, the, the buildup of, of always working for someone else, knowing that that, that wasn't who I, I wanted to be and, and who I am. Uh, I, I called home to my wife one day and I said, I can't, 
I can't do this anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm quitting today. And she kind of laughed, thought I was joking. And I said, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm today's the end of it. <laughs> I'm done. So I, I came home and, um, you know, I have a wife and, and I have four daughters too. So it's not like it was just me that I was, you know, affecting it. I still had to feed my family. So after, from investing in, in my first rental property, I started networking with local real estate investors, uh, going to some of the real estate investor meetings. And, um, I, I hooked up with a, a guy that's very successful, started with nothing and, and owned several hundred rental properties of his own. So he, he ended up being kind of a mentor to me. And when I quit my job, I, I went to something that I knew I could make some money right away. Um, and I, I'm good with, with working with my hands. So I started doing some maintenance for his properties, uh, doing some turnovers and some rehabs on, on new properties that he was buying. So that kind of, you know, I, I, I didn't jump fully off the cliff. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a jump to the bottom, like, like some people experience when they, when they quit a job like that. Uh, so, so that really helped. Um, now I'll go back to the beginning again and and do the other parallel story of my my health and fitness. I started in Taekwondo when I was six years old. Mm. So I spent a lot of my younger uh, formative years uh, really learning about health and fitness, um, how my body worked because I was using my my body more than, than other kids my age. Um, I was learning about stretching, about breathing, about you know really you know how how my body worked. And I, I carried that with me up, up, you know, through the rest of my life. And when I got into my teen years, I started competing real heavily in the Taekwondo. I aspired to be in the, the 2000 Olympics. The 2000 was the first year that, that Taekwondo was an official sport. It was in the, the 88 Olympics as a, a demonstration sport, but, um, I didn't quite make it to the, to the Olympics. I, I competed there. You know, we talked about some of the, some of the names and that you knew and, and, uh, the, that were in the national championships and the, in the Olympics. And I was, you know, I remember those guys, I was, I was there with them. Um, but uh yeah i didn't didn't quite make that goal but still you know it was it was a great experience um all all the the competitions that i went to um and that's where a lot of a lot of those lessons that i that i pull from taekwondo and apply them to the rest of my life uh that that's really where i've, I've you know learned a lot of those once i once i got out of um competing uh i i got into weightlifting and, and I've, I've done that ever since because i was always cutting weight to be in a weight class in Taekwondo. And then when I was done fighting, I thought, oh, I'm going to try to gain weight now. Turns out gaining weight is harder for me than, than what I thought it would be. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to, I'm one of those lean guys. So, and, and again, I'm fascinated with how, how the body works, how different things affect, um, you know, growth and, and development and even the, you know, the, the wider benefits of, um, working out, you know, not, no matter what you do, lifting weights or cardio and how that affects the rest of the body from development to the immune system, to, bone structure to your, your central nervous system, you know, how all that, that plays together and, and all those benefits. So, um, yeah, I, like I said, I, I nerd out on, on some of the science and I know a lot of your, your uh, audience is physicians, so I'm, I'm not on that level by any means, but, um, I, I really like to, to dig into some of those things and, and figure out how, how it works down to the molecular level. Yeah. It's interesting. And, in, uh, you know, like the lessons in, in sports and then, uh, sports is like a metaphor for life, you know, business, you know, everything. And, and it looks like you you have you had these skill sets and you you figure out your you know entrepreneurship is uh, is um combining skills which were you were doing and uh how do they these skills benefit your other areas of your life yeah um I, I have a couple examples um and actually I have uh, an entire outline for a book written I, I you know I want to put the, put it together in a book someday but uh a couple examples and actually let me go back a little bit um the to, to where i'm at now i i was able to merge uh, my passion for health and fitness and entrepreneurship into um, a business that i started a, a few years ago and uh, it was actually in 2020. Um, i started a clothing company that makes uh, dress shirts for men specifically fit for men with a, a, a athletic or muscular build um so that it's kind of a niche uh, that i got into and and you know i'm i'm one of the those guys it's it's hard to it's hard to find something when when your shoulders are a lot bigger than your than your waist they just you know they don't, they don't make shirts for that um that type of to, uh, body because mm -hmm. there's not many there's not many guys out there like that so um that's that's how i was able to, to to merge those two passions so some of the some of the examples that i give and the lessons that i i learned in sports kind of refer to you know my business and and um you know some of the things that have happened along the way and and starting my business so one of the kind of easy um, lessons that, that you can see, that, you know, easy to draw the comparison is working through adversity. In Taekwondo, 
when when you're in a match and you get hit in the face that's immediate adversity and and the effects are felt right away you know your your eyes can get watery you you can get dizzy you can you see stars hear bells uh but you don't you don't go in a taekwondo match to lose you know you still you're still there to win the match so mm -hmm. If you get if you get kicked in the face you know that's not a good feeling at all but you you still no matter what you're feeling you still have to keep pushing through that pain that discomfort that disorientation and figure out a way to to win the match and you know so i i draw from that lesson into business you know there's the metaphorical kick in the face all the time when you're in <laughs> business and you don't go into business to fail so no matter what happens um you know i mentioned that i, I launched my business in 2020 well specifically in March of 2020. And if you remember what happened in 2020, pretty much the week that I, I launched my business, the world started shutting down for the, yeah. um, so, um, there was a lot of, a lot of kicks to the face that I, that I took in my business and I was able to you know, remember, okay, you know, this, this is not comfortable. This is not something I expected, but I also didn't expect and you know, in this match that when I got kicked in the face and I, you know, I was able to to pivot and and learn from that right away and and figure out how to move forward and and win the fight. Another one that's that uh, can be controversial, uh, makes some people uncomfortable, is everything is your fault. It's it's ownership that you know some some other influencers talk about this too. I, I think um, Jocko Willick uh, talks about this sometime. Extreme ownership. I, I think he, that's the one who wrote this. But yeah, everything that happens to you is is your fault and. Um, when I when I tell people that, especially you know at the gym, um, you know if 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 somebody's not as strong as they need to be, or if somebody's overweight, if if it's not your fault, then that means you you can't change it. You know it, it, if if it's if something is not caused by you, or if it's some if it's caused by something else, um, then you're you're not really you don't really have the power to change that, but if you're able to find a way that you've caused that, that, that that's your fault. Um, you know, when I tell somebody that they, you know, they can get offended, but I, I'm really saying that to empower them because, you know, if that's your fault, that's great because you have the power to change that. So in, you know, in Taekwondo, again, when, when you're on the mat, it's just you, you know, you and the other guy. So everything that happens is, is your fault. Um, if you miss a kick or you, if you see an opportunity and you didn't take it, that's your fault. You know, that that's completely up to the, up to you. And even, uh, you know, when you're, when you're training, um, you know, there's other people involved, but you put yourself in that position to be with those people. And if they're not the right people to be training with, you have to find the right people and find the right training methods. And it's, uh, it's all up to you. And, you know, some people, uh, do some mental gymnastics to figure out how things aren't their fault because it's uncomfortable to, to admit something is, is your fault. Uh, but if you look at it, as um you know if it's your fault then you have the power to change it you know that now you have now you're empowered and now you can do something about it if it is your fault mm -hmm. one other one uh real quick is uh spotting opportunities again on the taekwondo mat opportunities come and go real quickly uh you know if somebody moves their foot a certain way and they they open themselves up if you see that you have to be you have to have your eyes trained and your your body trained to take advantage of that opportunity right away and if you haven't prepared yourself to be quick enough or to recognize that that opportunity and, and capitalize on it quickly, you're going to miss it. And it's probably not going to happen again. Mm. Same in business, um, you know, opportunities come and some of them go real quickly and you have to, you have to be ready for them and see the opportunity and be able to, to jump on it and capitalize on it. Um, so those are the types of things that I'm, you know, I, I see now that I'm, you know, get, uh, I'm older and I look back on my, my Taekwondo days and, you know, there's the same, same lessons learned in, in the weight room that I, I see now. And really, you know, you don't have to have been in Taekwondo, any sport, really baseball, football, gymnastics, you know, all those lessons are, are still there. It's just, um, you have to really analyze where the lessons are and learn to draw from them and, and apply them to other areas of your life. I love that, especially that uh, extreme ownership and, um, it's interesting because uh, I did a month long challenge where I did everything like I, everything that happened to me, I, like good and bad was like my fault. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's amazing. Like if you take if you step up and you take responsibility for the bad things that happen to you, then you start to really own your life and you can you have more control. Which brings us to this idea of mindset, because really minds in sports is great for developing mindset. And um, uh, do you feel that? People that don't participate in sports are they disadvantaged you know, in in business and entrepreneurship or 
definitely um you know physical fitness but what are your thoughts not necessarily disadvantaged i think it it is a, a good thing to have in your background um it'll it'll set you up better for for success um you know one of the another you know analogy is if if you're in the weight room and you you learn how to push yourself to true muscle failure which um you know, people hear that and they they don't most people don't really understand, especially beginners, what true muscle failure is and what it feels like. Uh, when you're a beginner, you, you don't you think you got you went to failure, but once you train your mind and your and your muscles, you really know what true muscle failure feels like. Um, so if, if you've never experienced that, if you've never pushed yourself to that type of discomfort, then you know in in business, are you are you really pushing yourself to you know? to you know not necessarily failure there but to your full fullest potential and that can be you know, that can require a lot of discomfort and and um some pain and some some scary times and uh if if you've put yourself through that in the weight room or or in taekwondo you know whatever it might be then you know what your limits are and you know you have the the determination and you know the grit to to go through that in in other areas so um yeah i definitely think it's an advantage uh if you if someone hasn't been through that um it doesn't mean they, they can't be as successful, but I, I think it's just, it, it sets you up better if, if you've had that experience. Yeah. I love how you transition from, you know, you, but you were the athlete, you, you became proficient at the sport and then you, you graduated and you're now you're teaching others. What advice do you have for, um, you know, for as a coach and parents with regards to healthy lifestyle, physical activity, getting them into comp competitive sports, developing character, um, what is your advice? Yeah, uh, especially for parents out there, uh, get your kids started young. Um, the, the younger, the better, uh, because that's you know, that's and they're as they're growing, you know, those things are going to when they're when their their brain is growing and, and forming those neural connections, those things are going to be ingrained you know, with them the rest of their life. If, if they learn how to take care of their body, the, their nutrition, um, you know, they're they're going to carry that with them, and, and it's going to set them up even better for for anything that they do when they when they get older. So, parents definitely, if if you can get your kids in in any sport and and teach them how to how to be healthy and, and take care of themselves, um, that you're you're setting your kids up for for success. Uh, and how do people uh, contact you? I know you have a clothing company. Maybe people want to check that out. Um, how do people yeah. reach out to you on social media? Your website. Yeah. Um, yeah, my, the website for the company, it's, it's atlasmenswear.com. It's A-T-L-A-S menswear. And m the links to my social media are on the, the website. Um, Instagram is atlas underscore underscore menswear. And uh, there's a Facebook link on my website too. And if you want to get a hold of me, ask me questions or anything, um, any of the social media, I still uh, run it all myself. You know, I have my, my hands and all that. So if you send me a message, I'll get to it. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll respond. And, and yeah, I love to, talking to people about this. Yeah, and uh, it's been a fantastic conversation, really about um, sports and how it benefits your other life. Um, if people want to follow you, or uh, all of your, all of um, Aaron's resources will be in the links and show notes. And be sure to check out his clothing company, Atlas Menswear. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next